Hi, my name is Chrissy Lowry. I'm the founder of um, Shop Handmade. I am also the head director, so there's a seven of us. Seven directors within Shop Handmade, along with um, a team of volunteers as well. A little bit about me. So, I was a clinical nurse specialist back in 2013 and I became quite sick. Um, it turned out I had quite a few chronic illnesses and I had to give up my nursing career. I also have a son called Sack and he got diagnosed with autism the same year. He didn't sleep very well. Um, we had a bit of a, a bit of a terrible year really and he nested in his bed. Um, which is putting lots of things in his bed that shouldn't be in there to try and get comfort. So I designed um, a bed for him called the Cuddle Bed, which it is now. It is protected by the IPO office, so it's design protected. Um, my business is endorsed and awarded by Theo Pifitas. I sell in his shop. I sell in Wayfair, Achanda, which is now the craft store, and Ireland. Rooms for Rascals, quite a few places, quite a few places. So that um, business generates lovely. Okay, so the revenue in there comes on lovely and I don't have to do a great deal. Um, obviously I have to run it and I have a team that sews for me now, six years later. Back when I was a new person to crafting, I hadn't a clue. You know, as a nurse, I didn't know anything about social media, SEO. Uh, crafting at all actually because I taught myself to sew um, anything absolutely anything no marketing strategies no social media strategies no email marketing I didn't know anything and I employed a uh, coach back in 2015 um, so and then other coaches as well so I've learned a lot on my way I've been in Forbes magazine. I have been in so many articles. It is incredible, really. I can't list them all, but there's there's probably about 30. And books as well. I've written two books. One's a bestseller. We're writing another one now uh, with my team. Um, anyway, back in 2015, I applied for Not on the High Street because uh, that looked a really good place to sell. I was looking, you know, at different revenue streams. And they knocked me back and said, no, we're not going to offer you um, an online shop with us because they didn't feel my cuddle beds were unique enough, which at the time was a bit weird because they're protected and they're, you know, they've turned out to be a bestseller, which is fine. It's fine. Um, but then I thought, oh, I want to help others. I want to help other crafters like me because there's a huge, big craft uh, sales prep form called Etsy. I'm sure you've all heard of Etsy, but if you haven't, it's an American marketplace, e-commerce, multi-vendor site. And they, they, they're very good at what they do, um, but they charge crafters and, and uh, just absolutely loads of fees. So you have your fees um, to them, you have your PayPal or Stripe, for, Stripe fees, and then they've put on shipping, they have to... Um, if you sell with them, you have to pay a percentage of your shipping to them as well. Now, as I've been in the crafting community for six years now, there's a lot of people that are like, I don't want to pay that. I earn, re I work really hard. Now, crafters, just like any other small business, but do work hard because they are on their own. They've got all these hats. And it's very hard to work out everything that you need to do and then to go and pay. You, you know, you get hardly anything. Uh, in revenue back. So we started um, a business to help people, um, to help crafters set up their shops, um, learn more about business. There's a lot that we can teach them and it's working really well. So um, we have at present 53 or 54, that might be another one, um, could be 55, shop owners with us. Um, so they open up a shop they can either fill it up themselves and do all the listings all themselves with all the meter tags and SEO. They could just do that for um, and a very affordable price. Because that's what our mission is. We want to help others. Then we have a membership. Now, the membership is rescalable. I think we have 23 people in there at £10 a month. So um, 
very scalable, very can grow very quickly. And we've got so much experience between us, we run that together. We offer them a help group, which is free when they open a shop. We have seven people in there every day asking if they need any help. And we also have packages that they can pay us if they want us to lift their shop for them. Um, if they want us to manage their shop for them on a monthly subscription basis, people get busy or they can't just, some people just can't do tech. Um, they can craft, but they just can't do tech. So that's our revenue stream at the moment. We do have the books for sale and um, we are doing online markets. So that's fairly new in online market. We started it this month, um, Christmas in July. We are all over social media. Have a team of 22 volunteers that um, help with us. Um, they get free membership and um, free Canva. So it works really well. They're all hard working in the background, um, helping us post on all our social media. So we are on TikTok, Pinterest, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, YouTube. And we have a lady doing our newsletter as well. So we've got real good um, grounding for our business, real good start. And we have set our mission statement, our vision, and what we really want to achieve next year is to take our online shops offline. So we want to do some craft festivals and some craft fairs. And this is what we uh, need funding for. So we forecast all our figures, which you can see in the presentation and in the um, business plan. We've done our work. We're going to, because I'm endorsed by uh, Theo Pafitas, we're going to try and get him to open uh, the, the first festival in May next year. We are looking at sponsors. So people like Janome, Molly Makes, Shop Handmade, not well, I'm Shop Handmade, sorry. Um, what did I mean? Oh gosh, Hobbycraft. Should know Hobbycraft. Every crafter loves Hobbycraft. And there's loads. There's um, Baker Ross. We've got a big list of sponsors that we're going to start um, contacting. We're asking a kickstart um, program so we can get some staff to help us a bit more with that. Um, so we can get, I think, maybe three or four people coming in to help us for working for us to contact all the sponsors and to sign people up to this awesome craft of festivals we're looking at venues so um and the, the reason being is because we have an awesome community an awesome community in our groups i think we have over three thousand crafters okay that we've built up over the years we've been around the community for a long time and we project um a lot of those crafters will sign up and buy our offline our offline stores, our craft stores in the festival. Um, we have an expert. One of our directors is an expert of events. And um, they do craft fairs all the time. Obviously, COVID stopped that and took a lot of revenue away from crafters, artisans everyone that sells um, on craft stalls and festivals and um, they tried to pivot online but some of them couldn't and it just didn't work for them so they are desperate to get back. They've started coming back. Um, I know that they are going out weekends now, Christmas ones have been booked up so we think next year the forecast for everybody signing up um, to a craft festival it will be huge, it will actually be huge because they are absolutely desperate. The public are desperate to get out and the footfall um, is projected to be really good with an amazing venue. So um, that's our plans the following 20, the following year, 2023, we are going to scale up to eight. So this year, next year, sorry, 2022, we would like three um, in different places, probably. I don't know. We obviously got to see the first one and see how it goes, but we have directors all across the UK. So we're going to go for three next year. Um, May, summer and winter Christmas fair. All is in the um, business plan and everything. So you can look on the business plan. Um, so in 2023, we're going to forecast 
eight locations over the UK and um, at three different times of the year. The same, the same, because we know by our expert when most people are out and about, want to uh, invest in their own business or as a family want to come out to the uh, handmade festivals. Handmade, the one thing with handmade, it's catapulted into the public eye over COVID because we're the ones that still manage to continue. You know, there's a lot of people obviously shut down, furloughed and everything, but we still continued from home. That's the beauty of uh, working for yourself and getting everything posted to our uh, customers. My person, my Cuddlebed company, were shot up so massively in revenue over COVID. It was incredible. So we can capitalise on that. So I think that's everything I've got to tell you. It is all in the plans. I've got to get to work and um, start making. We are, like I said, we are a creative community with a lot of expertise. 89 years between us in the, in the directorships. So we're looking forward to... Um, building on our revenue.